Let's repeat. Let's repeat. What yeah. number is Let's that? Repeat. We Let's play it. We want to play it. Oh, yeah, we're each going to have that. Is this video thing that we're here with your drone and everything? Yeah, I guess I'm going to play the repeat. Let's play it. Let's play it. Six 
Are we rounding off the orders of magnitude? Or just <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the families and friends of all our graduates. We are delighted that you have joined us for this monumental occasion. The processional for the 2021 fall commencement will now begin. The audience is requested to remain seated during the processional. Candidates for doctoral degrees. The faculty of the university.
the newly commissioned officers in the United States military. Candidates for master's degrees. the College of Design. The College of Education. the College of Textiles. the Poole College of Management. College of Natural Resources.
the College of Sciences. the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences.
the College of Humanities and Social Sciences.
College of Engineering. Ladies and gentlemen, the chair of the faculty, Dr. Rajade M. Barry James. The senior vice provost, Dr. Dwayne Larrick. The deans of the colleges, 
members of the Board of Trustees, and honored guests. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of the colors by the NC State Combined Color Guard and our national anthem led by coordination. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Will the audience please be seated?
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Randolph Woodson, Chancellor of North Carolina State University. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to PNC Arena for NC State University's fall commencement exercises. And thank you all for joining us here on this very special occasion. I'd like to recognize the members of the North Carolina State Board of Trustees, representatives from the UNC System Board of Governors, esteemed guests, and members of the platform party. We're delighted to have you with us as we celebrate this great class of 2021. Yeah, yeah, come on, give it up for... <laughs> NC State is proud to be the People's University, a significant force in North Carolina's economic vitality and dedicated to improving the lives of all North Carolinians through our teaching, our research, our extension, our engagement, and through economic development activities. You know, our university system is nationally renowned thanks to the exceptional students, outstanding faculty and staff, and critical funding the state leadership provides to the University of North Carolina system. I want to congratulate each and every one of our graduates today as we celebrate their many achievements and thank them for the role that they played in making NC State such an outstanding place to live, to learn, and to, yeah, work. What, what you have been able to accomplish during your time at NC State, especially these last 20 months, is nothing short of extraordinary. You know, life during the COVID-19 pandemic has been challenging to say the least. And for all of you that have emailed me with your recommendations, I couldn't thank you enough. <laughs> but as I've told everyone when you write me, it's my first pandemic. We're doing the best we can. I wasn't here in 1918. I know that's a shock to the students, uh, but you have worked hard and you've worked through every obstacle and you've over overcome every difficulty. We have a lot of celebrating, so let's get to it. But let's first take a moment to hear from our Board of Trustees Chair, Mr. Stan Hope Kelly and Mr. Terry Hutchins, who will bring greetings from the Board of Governors. As Chair of the Board of Trustees, I'm deeply honored to recognize the extraordinary achievements of the class of 2021 and so happy to be here with you. All of you have exhibited great strength and flexibility throughout the challenges of the last 21 months. We are all so proud of everything that you've accomplished. To the friends and family that are here today as well, thank you. Your support and encouragement were vital to our graduates' journey here at NC State and was instrumental to their success. And graduates, I hope your time at NC State has given you strength, knowledge, and adaptability that will continue to serve you well as you move forward in this next chapter of life. I encourage you to stay connected with NC State and the wonderful people around you as alumni of this great university. Congratulations again on all that you have achieved and thank you for helping make the NC State community such an outstanding one. Go Pack! On behalf of the Board of Governors and as an alumnus of NC State, it is my great pleasure to recognize the class of 2021. I would like to offer my sincere congratulations to today's graduates. On this special day, we celebrate your academic accomplishments and the beginning of an amazing new chapter in your life. Today's celebration also allows us to recognize that you are graduating in the face of remarkable challenges. You persevered through a global pandemic and more to join us here today. I am confident that all of you will have the skills and the confidence you need to go out and take the world by storm. Graduates, be proud of all that you have achieved and know that you will always have a home here as part of the Wolfpack. I have no doubt that you will continue to make a positive difference in the world and inspire others to do the same. Congratulations, Class of 2021, and go Wolfpack. Thank you, Stan and Terry. Um, you know, each year, 
One of the joys is scouring the earth for the outstanding commencement speaker. And we're really proud today to bring back one of our own in Mark Templeton. Mark is a board of director, a leadership mentor, a software industry veteran. And before retiring in 2015, he was president and CEO and director of Citrix Systems, a leader in software for enabling a digital and virtual collaborative workspace. Boy, have they been busy during the pandemic. In his two decades at Citrix, Mark inspired the company's virtual workplace vision and led Citrix growth from a $15 million business with one product to a global powerhouse with annual revenues of over $3 billion with 100 million users worldwide and 10,000 employees. Many of you know this company in downtown Raleigh. And today, Templeton is an active board member of both public and private companies, uh, advising entrepreneurial teams from startup to scale up. He holds a bachelor's degree in design from NC State and an MBA from the University of Virginia. Mark, you honor us with your presence today, and we look forward to your remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mark Templeton. Whoa, fantastic to be here, good morning. And um, Chancellor Woods and I can't tell you how kind your and generous your words are, and I can't express what a special honor it is to be here talking to graduates at my alma mater. Um, you know, one day, um, you don't know who you are at this point, but one day, one or more of you will be up here pinching yourself as I am and grateful for the opportunity to inspire, encourage, and fire up this Wolfpack class at this time, the year of 2021. You know, graduating is a team sport. Um, so there are a lot of thanks to go around. Board of directors and trustees, Senior Vice President Larrick, Chair Kelly, deans, faculty, parents, especially families, and friends. So here's a heartfelt congratulations to each of you for guiding your students to this exciting milestone, for it's an act of love. You've given them wings. So, PAC class of 2021, congratulations. Come on, let's make some noise, come on. Yeah, you done it. You did it. You know, 55 years ago, uh, I know I look a lot younger than that, but uh, 55 years ago, I was sitting in your chair receiving my hard-earned degree in product design and really ready to forge ahead, not really sure where I was going at the time. It, but it was a really, really proud day. But little did I know that there would be three personal traits that would be much more valuable in my journey than my diploma. Those traits turned out to be passion, persistence, and humility. I believe they're the magic ingredients of success and fulfillment because I think both of those things matter in life. No matter what path you choose from here, for me, these three traits were essential to my 16 years as CEO of an S&P 500 software company, where I started actually as employee number 52. And when I retired, that little software company had grown to almost 10,000 employees, spanning 100 countries around the world. And as Chancellor Woodson said, grew from 15 million in revenue to over 3 billion in revenue. And one of the proudest moments was when we went into the warehouse district in Raleigh. That was one of the last areas to be revitalized downtown and went first and took one of the Dillon supply buildings and put up a really remarkable office and workspace for collaboration and really inspiring young people, young engineers, young product managers, young marketing managers and more to 
innovate and invent the future. So, you know, another piece, other than these three traits, I have to tell you, there's always a piece of magic in success that you have to remember every single day. And that's the magic of family. It's the magic of friends. And um, getting you here um, took a lot of magic. And certainly um, in my journey, it took a heck of a lot of magic because my family couldn't afford to send me to school. Uh, but your family really, really matters. And um, I'd like to just say my wife, Yvonne, my bride of 41 years, my three children, Warren, Pinckney, and Pierce, all make my journey possible. And it was that sort of piece of magic that allowed me to tap into these three traits that I'd like to talk with you about that helped make my journey possible. The first is passion, crazy, heart-pounding passion for something you love. I was lucky to find mine. In 1970, I began studying engineering right here at State. Uh, at the time, it seemed to be a really practical thing to do. And I knew it would made my, make my dad proud. Um, but actually, I very quickly realized that my heart wasn't in it. And my grade point average proved it. Every day, though, while walking to engineering classes, I would pass the College of Design. Back then, it was known as the School of Design. And I'd see students working day and night without sleep, carrying portfolios of work, sketching ideas, building prototypes, creating, innovating, imagining, working with their hands. And frankly, I was green with envy. So intuitively, I knew I wanted to be one of them. I just couldn't explain why, I just knew. And sometimes, you know, your analog brain, which lives right here in your body, when it talks to you, um, it will tell you something you can't know here in your digital brain. So unfortunately, uh, I didn't have the grades to transfer into design. Um, so I made a big decision. I dropped out altogether. My parents were completely devastated. Like about 20% of you, I was a first generation college student. So there I was, the first Templeton college student, and then thud, I was the first Templeton dropout. My Italian mother was in the background shouting, mamma mia, and uh, my dad, who's um, much more calm, said, son, be the best at something you love. You'll make all the money you need, and you'll never work a day in your life. Well, it sounded great because I didn't really want to work. I wanted to have fun. So doing something I loved um, was really my goal. So I knew at that time that I wanted to be a designer, as, uh, as, as the expression goes. And so I spent a year jumping through hoops, uh, kneeling in prayer. I developed some special knee pads to beg Dean Camp Hefner to admit me to the College of Design. He finally got sick of hearing from me, and um, he admitted me. Uh, in order to make it work, I had to uh, work multiple jobs, like pumping gasoline at, for about 20 hours a week at College Exxon, which is now an auto repair shop. I played varsity soccer, played club lacrosse, which was my first startup. And I made lifelong friends as a member of Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity. In 1975, I graduated with top honors in product design, but little did I know, my studies had given me something more valuable. They had given me skills in what I call design thinking. I spent the first part of my career in the forest products industry. 
uh, designing and manufacturing, believe it or not, wood moldings. One day, my partner and I uh, decided we needed some software to run the factory more efficiently and increase our profit margins. So when our search for software to do that came up blank, my partner said to me, OK, Mark, now what do we do? And I said, well, well I'll just write the software myself. And he said, um, do you know how to do that? And I said, no, but how hard could it be? Um, for you engineers out there, I actually started um, with a, uh, a, a system called Mumps. How many know, have ever heard of Mumps, other than the disease? All right, there you go. So I broke my pick on Mumps and decided to change uh, languages and taught myself to code. It was intellectually very challenging. Uh, it really stimulated my imagination. Uh, and, but most of all, it touched my heart. And because, damn, it was fun and it had real impact on our business. And so soon I realized my passion for software was much greater than for hardwood molding. So I took a step back and made the leap. And I made the leap uh, here from engineering to design and when I was working in my first career, I made the leap from wood molding to software. So it sounds like a crazy zigzag path, doesn't it? But I now realize that what I was learning uh, at the time to do was to connect dots and that my career would not be a paint by number process. So paint or connect. They're very, very different ways to pursue your dreams. Paint by numbers is much more discreet. You can visualize your life ahead. The risks and rewards are pretty much understood up front. So you fill in your journey number by number. Connect the dots, on the other hand, is about unique decisions, random events, chance meetings, good karma, or in my case, divine intervention. Risk and reward happens as you draw your journey dot by dot. Either approach works. For me, I'm about the connect the dots type, but the question is, what are you? Try and decide, because it's enormously powerful when you know. For me, passion was like a whiteboard marker for connecting the dots of life. And I learned to trust my heart. So I encourage you to trust yours. When you feel that joy, follow it to whatever crazy place it might lead you. It will not steer you wrong. Today, your eyes may be already open to that passion. I hope so. And if not, it's OK. Keep looking until you find it, or more likely, until it finds you. The second personal trait is persistence. Persistence demonstrates the depth of your passion. It was January 1999, I'll never forget it. I was appointed the new CEO of Citrix, replacing my retiring mentor. Citrix at the time led the NASDAQ 100 in profitability with 47% operating income. It's an incredibly impressive result even by today's standards. And the company was growing like mad, setting records, and we were among the great darlings of Wall Street. But in just six quarters, as a totally green, first-time public company CEO, I made a critical mistake. And in a few short months, the media headlines went from industry high flyer to major software company at a crossroads. On June 12th of 2000, we issued a press release in the morning and it said that 
I failed to see a market change that quickly emerged and slowed our business growth dramatically. At 6 p.m. that day, the CNN satellite truck pulled it up into our parking lot. I appeared pale as a ghost on CNN's money line with Stuart Varney. Our crash was the lead story of the evening, and we sent the NASDAQ market down 106 points that day. A lot of people lost a lot of money that day. And in an instant, I went from hero to zero. The Citrix Board of Directors then convened, evaluated my performance, decided to replace me, and I was demoted to, from CEO to senior executive officer. And I have to tell you, that hurt really bad. It hurts to this day. It's a scar I can still feel right around here. So after losing my five-star epaulets, I made a very so short speech. I told the board, I love Citrix. I drove us into this ditch, and I'm going to get us out. I'm not a quitter. At the time, I had a lot of trusted friends and advisors uh, telling me to resign. Um, they thought that the uh, decision of the board was very unfair. It was very public and very humiliating to be demoted that way. Uh, actually, I disagreed. I knew I was accountable, and I stayed. I stayed in the game and confronted our challenges. In a few quarters, we were back on track, and the Citrix board offered me my epaulets back. I had to think about it for about three milliseconds, and once again was CEO. Persistence had won the day. The lesson here is that setbacks always happen. No one has ever been successful without accumulating scars that hurt. Why? Because they actually make you stronger. But they only make you stronger if you seize them as opportunities to persist. So when you get knocked down, and you will, when conventional thinkers are against you, and I promise you, they will be. Consider it a test of your passion. If it's real, you'll persist, and you'll win. That brings me to the final story, and it's about humility. I'm not talking about the aw shucks type. I'm talking about the putting others first type of humility. I learned this from my dad, a native North Carolinian and a lineman who never finished high school, who worked with his hands and eventually owned a small factory. <clears throat> my dad is the humblest man of all men I know. And uh, <clears throat> he was not a verbal teacher, he was a teacher by example, by being a role model. And he showed me humility in three fundamental ways. In his factory, I watched my dad dole out assignments to each worker in the morning and then give himself an assignment, usually saving the toughest work for himself. So humility is understanding that there's no shame in any work whatsoever. Secondly, humility is the essence of respect. Dad never let job titles define the degree of respect he gave to others. Instead, he accepted job titles as a means of managing complexity and keeping things organized and he totally rejected job titles as a proxy for human respect. He believed everyone deserved equal respect and a voice. And I saw that played out every single day. 
And third, he taught me that humility is about introspection. It means looking in the mirror regularly. I like to say to, um, well, uh, when I was running a company, if you see a problem, I want you to get up as fast as possible and run to the bathroom. And, and uh, people would say, well, why run to the bathroom? And it's because there's a mirror in there. And you have to look in that mirror on a regular basis and decide, am I the problem or am I part of the solution? Because asking that question starts with being vulnerable, willing to be wrong, and it fuels your ability to be brutally honest with yourself. So in the end, true humility is about being a servant, putting obligation to others before opportunity for oneself. So sitting here today, you have to be pondering the future. I certainly was 55 years ago. What's ahead? What's next? How do I navigate such an ambiguous world? As Steve Jobs so eloquently said, quote, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So I say, have the courage to trust your heart and let these three traits connect your dots. Passion. Your passion will reveal your next move. It may surprise you, just go with it. Persistence, you will be challenged, advised, and argued with. Persistence will carry you through. And then there's humility. Be a humble servant to others, for humility is the true mark of a leader. Congratulations, class of 2021. Let the power of the pack be with you always. Go Pack! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mark, uh, for those wonderful words of inspiration and encouragement and persistence does pay off, and it certainly has uh, for you and your family. So now let's pause and enjoy a special musical presentation from Coordination. You're not. 
not alone in all not this. Alone. You're not alone, I promise. Standing together, we can do anything. I want to leave you I better. Want I want my life to matter. I am afraid I have no purpose here. Rain it falls, rain it falls. Pour it on me. How about coordination? Give it up for our singers. We may not have a music major, but we've got a lot of great musical students. How about those stats? 
incredible, aren't they? Such, such a diverse and impactful group, and now the moment we've all been waiting for has arrived, the conferring of degrees. To begin the conferring of degrees, please welcome Senior Vice Provost Dwayne Larrick. Thank you, Chancellor. Dean Peter Harries will present the candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy and the Doctor of Education degrees. Thank you, Senior Vice Provost Larrick. It is a distinct honor to acknowledge both those masters and doctoral students who completed their degrees in 2021. These students receive, received their degrees in subjects spanning the gamut from advanced analytics to youth, family, and community sciences. You persevered, mirroring a theme that we heard earlier, through the pandemic to, to successfully complete your degrees despite the significant disruption to your classes, your research endeavors, and your lives. I'm convinced the challenges you have overcome have only made you that much more effective in your future pursuit. You've learned to really think and do, and we are incredibly excited to see the positive impacts that you will have on North Carolina, the country, and the world. Will the marshals please conduct the doctoral candidates to the right of the stage? Will the audience please hold its applause until all the candidates have received their diplomas? Sadia Afrin, Aditi Agarwal, Saeed Ahmadi Alunabadi, Michael Kirsten Ailman, Nof Aluda, Rachel Marie Atkins. Nigatu Akli Atlaw, Sahand Azarbi, Ruxana Baby, Sung Wong Bak. Manik Chandra Biswas. Manuel Ernesto Camacho Umana. Samit Chakraborty. Siwan Chin. Tongji Chin. Stephanie Chismar. Kimberly Nicole D'Arcangelo. Rebecca S. Davis. Coco Tucker Dixon. Angela Diorio. Mohammed Hisham El Badre. Zahara Faeli, Alireza Gamabi, Mohammed Gassimi, Ayana Glaze, Sanaz Goldani. Jeffrey Alexander Bennett, Suyong Han, Margaret Mary Husser, Margaret Andrews Holland, S.M. Azizel Hawk, 
Brandon Michael Huber. Maxime Islam. Gray Isley. Thomas Jackson. Brock Hamrath. Layla Khalidi. Iman Khan. Matthew Coleman. Sholil Koner. Christina Krantz. Ashish Kumar. Amrita Lal. Roger Duval Lori. Lei Lei. Hannah Catherine Levinson. Sheng Shen Lin. Michael Lloyd. Michelle Cudd. Jonathan Lopez Torres. Salvatore Luizo. Yukon Luo. Srivatsan Madhavan. Diego Martinez. Patrick Maxwell. Annabelle Elizabeth Offer Mead. Sare Meshkinfam. Chiai Tamamoto Mochizuki. Brandon Isaiah King. Megan Eileen Moore. Natasha Iris Castellanos. Zachary Morrow. Atafa Morsali. Abdullah Mugrabi. Braden Myers. Ha Wen. Mostaba Nogabai. Deja Ortwig. Marik Ojuan. Erica Pambianchi. Panda. Rajesh Paul. Jessica Proctor. Sharon Pradeep. Raphael Prodomo. Lauren Elizabeth Redpath. Emily Margaret Reed. James Reynolds. Anna R. Rogers. Sefida Saidlu. Andres Sanabria. Carl Shukard. Caitlin Seed. Elnaz Shabani. Mahmoud Shihata. Gada Al Kus. Kira Kalupka Sims. Sajad Tagia. Pepe Huang. Junkai Liang. Xiao Chu Huang. Olivia Ann Weedy Gardner. Sarah Ann Matter Solem. James R. Wills. Jing Yuan. 
Darlene Echevarria, Franklin Zambrano, and Emily John. Chan Zhang, Wan Bin Zhou, Yu Xu, Deniar Sumadilov, Nupur Ranade, James Buffington Har III, Yetsin Kwong, Alonso Braden Alexander, Arif Rakmatula, Zarifa Zakaria, Ruth Orkeilu Akintunde, Iwan Dong, Samihar Marwan. Reynoso Omisigo Idaho. Jacqueline Janetta Perry Higgs. Robert Brandon Garland. Masai Kellyan Kinsey Ship. Dominique O. Manusos. Fallon McKeever Brewington. Carmen L. Cooper. Angela Moore Thomas. Rebecca Berry. Stephen Timothy Turner. Katie Danielle Bowman. Lancelot Arthur Gooden. Carmen Nunnally, Robin Stevenson Warfield, Chancellor Woodson, upon the recommendation of the Administrative Board of the Graduate School, I am delighted to present the following candidates. Will all candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy and Doctor of Education degrees please stand? Will the major professor sponsoring those candidates today please stand with them? Chancellor Woodson, upon the recommendation of the Administrative Board of the Graduate School and the graduate faculty, I prevent, present these candidates who have fulfilled the degree requirements and recommend that their appropriate degrees be conferred. Upon the recommendation of Dean Harries, the Administrative Board of the Graduate School and the graduate faculty of North Carolina State University, and by the authority vested in me by our Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you individually the doctorate degree with all the rights, responsibilities, and honors pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Graduates, please be seated. Dean Harris will present the candidates for the master's degree. Will the candidates for all master's degrees, including the professional master's degree, the master of arts degree, the master of education degree, the master of fine arts degree, and the masters of science degree, Please stand as I mention your college and remain standing. First, will those master's students from the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences please stand.
and remain standing, please. College of Design. College of Education. College of Humanities and Social Sciences. Poole College of Management. College of Natural Resources. College of Sciences. Wilson College of Textiles. And the College of Engineering. Chancellor Woodson, upon the re recommendation of the Administrative Board of the Graduate School and the Graduate Faculty, I present these candidates who have fulfilled the degree requirements and recommend that their appropriate degrees be conferred. Upon the recommendation of Dean Harries, the Administrative Board of the Graduate School and the Graduate Faculty of North Carolina State University, and by the authority vested in me by our Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you, individually, I know, <laughs> it says a group, but individually, the master's degree with all the rights, responsibilities, and honors pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Will the graduates please be seated? Senior Vice Provost Larrick will recognize several groups of special undergraduate students that are here with us today. Thank you, Chancellor Woodson. I would like to rec recognize the undergraduate students <clears throat> who are graduating with academic honors. These students may be identified by the color designated honor sashes that they are wearing. I will first ask those designated with a gold sash, graduating summa cum laude with grade point averages of 3.75 and above, to please stand and remain standing. Will those designated with the silver sash graduating magnum cum laude with a grade point average from 3.5 to 3.74 please stand and remain standing. <laughs> now will those designated with a white sash graduating cum laude with grade point averages from 3.25 to 3.49 please stand. Congratulations to all of you on your wonderful accomplishment. Thank you and please be seated. Next, I would like to ask those students who have successfully undertaken and completed the special demands of the University Scholars Program. Please stand as I read these. The University Scholars Program and remain standing. The University Honors Program, the Good Night Scholars Program, the Park Scholars Program, the Caldwell Fellows, or their college or departmental honors programs to stand and be recognized at this time. Thank you and please be seated. The college deans will now present the candidates for baccalaureate degrees from their respective colleges. Once all the colleges have been introduced, Chancellor Woodson will come back to the podium and confer their degrees. At this time, I would ask Dean Richard Linton um, to come to the podium, present the candidates for the associate and baccalaureate degrees from the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Will the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences please stand? 
Will the faculty of the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences please stand with the candidates? Now is the time for students, their families, and the faculty to make a little bit of noise, to hoot and holler. Let's hear from you. At the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, we are tremendously proud of our graduates. These graduates continue our grand legacy and will be the leaders for the largest economic sector in North Carolina. These new leaders will help feed the world, protect our invaluable resources, and create a sustainable planet. Our students are ready to go, and they will lead. Senior Vice Provost Lyric, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, I very proudly present these candidates who have fulfilled the degree requirements and recommend that the appropriate degrees be conferred. Thank you, Dean Linton. Will the graduates please be seated? Dean Mark Hoverston will present the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees from the College of Design. Will the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees in the College of Design please stand? Senior Vice Provost Larrick, on behalf of the College of Design, I present these graduates, few but mighty, with great optimism for what they will accomplish. They have fulfilled the requirements, have been taught to design for life and to live a life of design. They will shape our cities, protect and restore our environment, develop products and processes that improve our lives, and tell moving stories through film, animation, games, and visual documentation. Their design thinking will help us understand the challenges we face, generate options to solve them, and thus to design our future. I recommend them without reservation. Would the candidates please be seated? Thank you, Dean Hoverstein. Interim Dean Paola Stein will present the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees from the College of Education. Will the candidates for the baccalaureate degree in the College of Education please stand? I I proudly present to you these candidates who will be North Carolina's most effective professional educators from the mountains to the coast. They will teach the next generation to read and solve problems. They will inspire our children and youth and advocate for them and their families. They will foster equity and challenge injustices. They will change lives and they will change our world. Senior Vice Provost Larrick, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Education, I present these candidates who have fulfilled the degree requirements and recommend that, that the appropriate degrees be conferred. Thank you, Interim Dean Stein. Will the graduates please be seated? Dean Lewis Martin Vega will present the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees from the College of Engineering. Will the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees in the College of Engineering please stand? All right. Will, will the faculty who are accompanying these students please stand with them? Thank you. Senior Vice Provost Larrick, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Engineering, I'm honored and proud to present to you the latest cohort of the most resilient and outstanding engineering and computer science graduates in the country. Driven by their excellence, boldness, optimism, 
humility, and most of all, over these last 20 months, their perseverance. They now move forward to convert ideas into reality, provide solutions to global and societal needs and challenges, and contribute in very significant ways to the economic development and welfare of North Carolina and our nation. All of the candidates have fulfilled the degree requirements, and I recommend that their appropriate degrees be conferred. Thank you, Dean Martin Vega. Will the graduates please be seated? Dean Myron Floyd will present the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees from the College of Natural Resources. Will the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees in the College of Natural Resources please stand? <laughs> Senior Vice Provost Larrick and Chancellor Woodson. On behalf of the preeminent faculty and staff of the College of Natural Resources, I proudly present these extraordinary, and yes, resilient, graduates who will be the stewards of our nation's forests, parks, wildlife, and water. They will create and manage spaces for recreation and sport, sustainably engineer paper and other biomaterials, and ensure the natural world around us continues to thrive. They have fulfilled the degree requirements of our college, and I recommend that the appropriate degrees be conferred. Thank you, Dean Floyd. Will the graduates please be seated? <clears throat> Dean Frank Buckless will present the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees from the Poole College of Management. Will the candidates for the baccalaureate degree in the Poole College of Management please stand? On behalf of the faculty, I present these baccalaureate candidates who have engaged with our faculty, academic, and industry partners to develop their entrepreneurial mindset and analytical problem-solving capabilities to address the problems and challenges of our world and to positively impact themselves, their families, their organizations, and our community. We welcome them as the newest members of our great Wolfpack community that celebrates excellence, innovation, inclusion, and ethical decision-making in all we do. We proudly present these candidates who fulfill the degree requirements and recommend the appropriate degrees be conferred. Thank you, Dean Buckless. Will the graduates please be seated? Dean Deanna Danels will present the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees from the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. Will the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees in the College of Humanities and Social Sciences please stand? On behalf of the faculty of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, where we are proud to join today outstanding colleges that make up this great university, and where we invite all NC State students, in addition to our own majors, to gain the habits of heart and mind that build more equitable communities, create less divisiveness, pursue social justice, and improve lives. I present today our candidates who, to put it simply but powerfully, can and will work for good. Mark my words, these graduates will change the world. <laughs> Senior Vice Provost Larrick, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, I proudly present these candidates who have fulfilled the degree requirements and recommend that the appropriate degrees be confirmed. Thank you, Dean Daniels. Will the graduates please be seated? Now, Dean Chris McGahan will present the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees from the College of Sciences.
Will the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees in the College of Sciences please stand? Congratulations to all of you. You should be proud of your accomplishments as we send you off on life's journey. You are our future, and I know you will make meaningful contributions to our world, from studies of subatomic particles through the universe. And um, I wish the best for all of you. Whether you take the dotted line or you take it in alphabetical order, <laughs> And um, I'm still trying to find out how I got here. <laughs> Congratulations again. So Senior uh, Vice Provost Larrick, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Sciences, I present these candidates who have fulfilled the degree requirements and recommend the appropriate degrees be confirmed. Thank you, Dean McGahan. Will the candidates please be seated? Dean David Hinks will present the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees from the Wilson College of Textiles. Will the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees in the Wilson College of Textiles please stand? Give it up. Senior Vice Provost Larrick, on behalf of the proud faculty of the Wilson College of Textiles, I present these candidates who will epitomize what it means to be part of Wilson for life. They will design, develop, and market next generation fibers and textiles that ensure our first responders and military are ever safer. They will develop innovative and sustainable clothing for a circular economy. They will take action to advance diversity and inclusion and deconstruct inequities where they find them. They will develop the next generation of filters that protect our most basic human needs by pu purifying the air we breathe. And I am confident they will show their Wilson for Life spirit by giving a helping hand to fellow alumni and the students that will follow them. Senior Vice Provost Larrick, these outstanding candidates have fulfilled the degree requirements and I am so proud to recommend the appropriate degrees be conferred. Thank you, Dean, Dean Hinks. Will the graduates please be seated? At this time, I would ask the deans of all the colleges and all the faculty to please stand for the conferring of degrees. Please stand. Will the members of the Board of Trustees please join the deans and faculty in standing? Will all candidates for the associate and baccalaureate degrees from North Carolina State University please stand? Chancellor Woodson, it is my pleasure, on behalf of the Provost and Chief Academic Officer, I present these candidates who will fulfill the degree requirements and recommend that the appropriate degrees be conferred. As your Chancellor, I'm so proud of all that you've accomplished, and I challenge you to meet the exciting demands that life has to offer and meet them head on. Be proud of your NC State heritage. And as you venture into life, give back to the place that provided you with wonderful opportunity. Come back, stay involved. So upon the recommendation of the provost, the deans and the North Carolina State University faculty, and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you individually your degree with all the rights and responsibilities and honors pertaining thereto. Congratulations.
you may be seated. The final group of students I would like to recognize today are our newest commission officers in the United States military. Would you please stand? These young men and women made the additional commitment during their time at NC State to further develop the character, skills, and leadership attributes necessary to earn the privilege to serve our nation as Army, Marine Corps, Navy, and Air Force officers. Now let's give these officers, our veteran graduates, their family and friends, and all members of our military community a round of applause to thank them for their service to our country. Thank you. You may all be seated, everybody. Each semester, the Commencement Advisory Committee is charged with conducting a search to select a graduating student to deliver a message on behalf of the entire graduating class. At this morning's commencement exercises, we're delighted to have with us College of Humanities and Social Sciences graduate, Shannon Fuller. Shannon Fuller started her undergraduate career more than 25 years ago at Las Puncitas College in Livermore, California, where she earned an Associates of Art degree. And in 2019, Shannon continued pursuing her undergraduate degree at NC State. And today, she graduates magna cum laude with a Bachelor's of Arts degree in leadership in the public sector the first in her family to graduate from college. Followed by her daughters, Cameron and Claire Fuller, she completed her degree while working full time at Cisco Systems, supporting the US Department of Homeland Security. Please welcome our student speaker, Ms. Shannon Fuller. Thank you, Chancellor. Good morning and welcome, family, friends, faculty, and graduates. Well, I don't know about you, but this is not a bad way to start a day. To all of you who have come here today to support and celebrate a graduate, we thank you. And to my fellow graduates, it is with great humility and pride that I participate in this event honoring you, the North Carolina State University's Fall Class of 2021. Congratulations. <laughs> but before I begin, I'd like to address the elephant in the room. You may have noticed that I'm just a little bit older than most of you. You might even be wondering, what is my mom doing on stage giving the student commencement speech? <laughs> kind of awkward, I know. It is for me too. Yes, I am a 51-year-old mom. <laughs> but 
I'm also an NC State student and soon to be NC State alum, just like you. In full transparency, I had to Google, how do you write a commencement speech? I mean, I did apply to be the student commencement speaker, but I never in a million years thought they would pick me. <laughs> I guess I was wrong. <sighs> so now I can only hope that I don't embarrass my children or have a hot flash. <laughs> Could happen. Anyway, Google said that I'm supposed to inspire and challenge you. My first thought was, well, that's obnoxious. <laughs> and then, what are you, crazy? I can't do that. And then I started to write. And what came out is a story, my story. A very personal story that only a handful of people have heard. A story about navigating the bumpy road of life. A story about shame and insecurity. A story about resilience and perseverance. A story about self-acceptance and empowerment. I don't know if I'm going to inspire or challenge you, but my hope is that you leave here today feeling like there's nothing you can't do and that you're never alone. So here it goes. My name is Shannon Fuller, and I was born and raised in Northern California. When I was at the age of 15, I got into drugs and alcohol and dropped out of high school in the 10th grade. I've been on my own ever since. At one point, I was homeless, sleeping in my car in a Walmart parking lot. I don't know what my life would be like today if I had made better choices. But what I do know is the path I took to get where I am today was not a straight line. There were lots of curves and starts and stops. But I have no regrets because I learned a lot along the way. When I was 19, I took the GED exam and got my high school diploma. When I was 20, I enrolled in a six-month computerized accounting program and quickly realized that I had a knack for computers. Now, I should mention this was during prehistoric times like before the internet. So just like let that soak in a minute. Anyway, after I completed that program, I got a job at a small startup company. Over the past 25 years, I've built a career in IT doing everything from software development to program management to leading engineering teams to my current role as a customer success executive supporting the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Yep. <laughs> Sounds good, right? Don't get me wrong. I am grateful for my professional career. Work saved my life. Work is where I learned how to talk and dress and act. Work is where I learned what I was good at and that it was okay to fail. It's where I grew up. 
But I always had this fear and insecurity in the back of my mind because I wasn't educated like most of the people that I worked with. I wasn't normal. I dreaded work social events where a colleague would say, so, where did you go to college? What do you say? I'm a high school dropout? No. They'll think I'm not smart. They won't trust me to do a good job. They'll think something's wrong with me. I lived every day in constant fear that I would be found out. Classic imposter syndrome. And as I got older and progressed in my career, the worse it got. Most people that know me would probably say they couldn't see it, but it was always there, and sometimes still is. But regardless of where I was in my career, I always had this goal to go to college and get a bachelor's degree. So in my early 20s, I went to community college and got an AA degree. And I met the most amazing man, my husband. <sighs> Throughout my marriage, raising a family, and working full time, I attempted to go back to college several times, but life always got in the way. And then in 2019, when both of our daughters were in college, and we were empty nesters, I enrolled at NC State. That was two very long years ago. And it was not easy. But I know you know that. Juggling school and work and sports and family and our social lives is stressful. There are times when you don't think you can do it, when you want to give up. You question if the effort is worth the reward. But I have always believed that it's the difficult things in life that are the ones most worth doing. Getting here was difficult. But regardless of how we got here, we're all here. The paths we take and have taken may be very different, but being different is good. It's those unique experiences that make us special and give us diverse perspectives that organizations and governments and communities need. We need people at the table who are different, think different, believe different, know different. I don't know what this degree means to you. I know what it means to me. So what I hope you take away from my story is that I spent a lot of time second-guessing myself, thinking that I wasn't good enough, comparing myself to others, and feeling less than. Only to find out later in life that I am, and always have been, an intelligent, capable, worthy human being, and on occasion, a force to be reckoned with. So take time and revel in your accomplishment. Celebrate this amazing milestone. Enjoy your time in the sun. You earned it. And when you're done, 
Set your sights on your next mission, your next goal, the next hill to climb. What is it that you want? What are you good at? What do you love? Spend time and think about it. And then set a goal, a big, bold one, and go get it. And do not stop until you do. Maybe it's getting your master's degree, <laughs> or running a marathon, or writing a book, or starting your own company. Whatever you choose, you, this is just the beginning of a new and exciting journey. Your path might not be like others. It might be curvy like mine, but it's yours, so own it. Own the successes and the failures. Own the good choices and the bad. Learn from all of those experiences to build a better version of you. And from this day forward, when you get knocked down, hit a roadblock, fail at something, lose confidence in yourself, remember this day, this moment, this feeling and remind yourself that you can do anything. You can achieve anything. You can conquer anything as long as you're willing to do the hard work. Wolves are territorial animals that fiercely protect their own and travel in packs. So no matter where life takes you, you will never be alone because walking beside you is this NC State community. We are a wolf pack family forever bonded by this amazing experience. And with that, I'm going to leave you with my favorite quote by John Maxwell. I'm never down. I'm either up or I'm getting up. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2021. Go Pat! Well, Shannon, there's no one in this arena that's surprised that you were selected to give the commencement address. Thank you for sharing your story and those incredibly encouraging words. Now I would like to invite our student body president to the podium, Mackenzie Hevlin. My name is Mackenzie Hevlin, and I've been honored to serve as your student body president. I want to congratulate you all on graduating and also thank you for your love for, of NC State. It's created so many fantastic memories for all of us. Let's take a look back on some of those memorable moments.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we call the seventh inning stretch. So if all of those in attendance that are family and friends of our graduates, please stand. Graduates, this is a very special group of people that have supported you throughout your journey at NC State. So graduates, you, would you please thank your family for all their support. I think they meant it. <laughs> you may be seated. The turning of the tassel is symbolic of turning another page in one's life. And I'd like to ask our student speaker to come to the podium to lead the traditional turning of the tassel. Let me also ask Chuck Flink, the president of our Alumni Association Board of Directors to come forward. And will all of the candidates for the associate and baccalaureate degrees please stand with Shannon as she leads us in the traditional turning of the tassel. Are you guys ready? It would indeed be my honor to lead my fellow graduates and class of 21, 2021 in the turning of the tassel. Here we go, one, two, three. Good morning, graduates. On behalf of more than 260,000 living alumni and members of the NC State Alumni Association, it is my happy and humble privilege to welcome the class of 2021 into the Wolfpack Family Alumni. As you move forward, I urge you to visit and volunteer your time and experiences to the next generation of Wolfpack Nation. Howl back to your alma mater by sharing your expanded insights and expertise through the Alumni Association. By now, I hope those of you wearing the official NC State class ring have turned your ring so the block S is facing outward. This time-honored tradition symbolizes your graduation and is a mark of your outstanding achievement. How about one more standing ovation for the class of 2021? Congratulations. Go Pack. Yes, you may be seated. Well, it's been a great morning. Following the singing of our alma mater, the recessional will begin. Please remain in your seats until the platform party, the faculty, and our doctoral graduates have completed the recessional. I sincerely want to thank each of you for being a part of this celebration. Graduates, we would not be here today without your hard work, dedication, and perseverance. And I'm confident that your future is bright. It is time to take your knowledge, your creativity, your compassion, and that famous think and do attitude out into the world. I'm so proud and happy for all of you. Congratulations. Yeah. I, I invite everyone to rise and join coordination as they sing the alma mater and go pack.
Thank you. 